do you know about how a lot of these events evolved into what they are today? A lot of them have sort of been <coughs> uh, picked up from historic feats. Um, and sort of a lot of them, people have taken poetic license and just designed horrible things nowadays as well. And then um, you get mixtures of those types of things. So stone lifting um, is, is a big one that sort of um, historic strength cultures around the world have, have often um, developed uh, and evolved in, in isolation. They haven't really been connected but a lot of strength cultures because you didn't have beautiful barbells a thousand years ago, but you had stones. So developing strength and testing strength. And um, is Scotland's the big one when it comes to, to your, your manhood stones, if you like. And the, it was like the Dinny stones and stuff like that. So Dinny was a, was a separate thing okay. that evolved later. Um, things like the Inver stone and, and the Strength purists won't like you, and Scottish purists and Celtic historians don't like calling them manhood stones because it's a very poor translation of, of the actual Gaelic, but for all intents and purposes, people know most of the stones over there as manhood stones because they were often used by chieftains to help select warriors for their clans. Um, they'd have to run full pelt of the outheld broadsword and duck under it at the last second without flinching. Um, they would have to jump the length of a kilt, which is something like five yards. Um, and then they would have to lift a certain size stone onto a stone dike, like a small fence, to prove their worth yeah. as a warrior. And that's so cool. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. It's really cool. But then you had, um, there were instances of stone lifting evolving in areas like Denmark and Scandinavia. So your Vikings and that kind of thing. Uh, for, for not just testing manhood, but also settling disputes. Um, there, were, there were stones in, in Denmark, I know, that I've actually had the privilege of lifting that the idea was that you stood on the edge of a hill, a grassy hill, held this stone aloft from the ground, as long as you couldn't, whoever held it the longest won the dispute, like, you know, whatever they were arguing about. Uh, and then, um, I know American Indian cultures and, and several other cultures, even Japanese, there's a lot of Japanese shrines that have stones at them that were, a lot of people don't realise were actually used in a similar capacity. So, um, stone lifting is, is an obvious one. Your modern day, Atlas stones or your Maglashan stones that we, we see in World Strongest Man and, and do a lot in Strongman, um, they're not your, your typical traditional stones because obviously we didn't have perfectly round concrete stones a thousand years ago. But they're, they're sort of a, a modern spin on that. Now, the first set were carved from sandstone um, or, or granite, but the mo sets we have out here are sandstone uh, and, and named the Maglashan stones in Scotland in the late 70s. And then they became used in World's Strongest Man and, and gained their fame from there and, and now they're a huge thing. Some of your other events, um, things like your, your, your clean and presses, so your log um, and your axle stuff, they obviously have evolved from a, a copy of say your Olympic lifts, your overhead presses, floor to overhead, just with a strongman spin on them. Like it wasn't until World's Strongest Man competition started putting handles in tree trunks that we had log lifting and nowadays that's evolved to be a steel tube, so that's more accessible to have everybody else to have. I notice you have a nice timber log down there. Yeah, dude, I wanted you to be able to lift it, <laughs> so you're gonna have to come back. I've got to come back. I'm, <laughs> I'm aware it's here. I have to come back and have a go. Supersonic.